everyone. I hope everyone is doing good. So welcome to this video uh, of the same chapter production in plants. So up till now we have covered about asexual reproduction, uh, its type, yes, uh, then uh, the structure of the flower, the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part. We have discussed the male reproductive part, that's the anchor in detail. We discussed about uh, in the previous video the formation of the pollen grains, that is microsporogenesis. So in this video, we are going to discuss in detail about the pollen grains. So in the previous video, we had discussed how the pollen grains are formed. Now, once the formation has taken place, what is their structure and how they will carry out the fertilization, the reproduction process in detail that we will see in this video. Uh, in the under the heading of formation and development of the male gametophyte. So let's begin. Before that, I, I have just included this recap, uh, whatever we have covered up till now. So in the asexual reproduction, we have covered these different types of asexual reproduction, uh, which also includes vegetative propagation like cutting, grafting, culture, etc. Then uh, we discussed about the sexual reproduction, the androsium in detail, that is the stamen, which has the anchor in the filament. Anchor is the place where the pollen grains will be formed in the microsporangia. Then uh, gynosium is the female reproductive part, which is also known as the pistil or the carpel, which has three parts in it, stigma, style, and oval. We are going to discuss the gynosium in detail in the next video. So let's begin with the pollen grain. Yes. Uh, so if I ask you, what is the name of the male gamete of the plant? So the answer you know that is it is the pollen grain. Uh, and have you ever seen it? So you might have seen this hibiscus flower and the these yellow, yellow granular structure. It's, it, the pollen grains are not only on the hibiscus flower. You will see all the flowers which are having androsium, the anchor. These granular structures, these are nothing but the pollen grains, which are the male gamete of the plant. Okay, if you have not seen it, uh, you can uh, take a flower and get a flower from uh, your neighborhood and try to locate these uh, granular structure inside the flower. In hibiscus, it is exposed. In some of the flowers, it will be embedded inside. Okay. So let's begin uh, how the pollen grain is. So what is the pollen grain and the structure of it? So you will see pollen grains in different shapes and sizes, uh, different structure and different shapes, depending upon which plant, from which plant they are coming. And it is the male gametophyte. Mostly it is globular, that is it is circular in structure, in outline, and you will also see several other shapes, just like you see on the picture over here. You see this honeybee over here, you know, bathing in the pollen grains, so this is how they help in transferring the pollen grain to the female reproductive part. Okay, so while they are sucking nectar, when the honeybees or the butterflies, they are sucking nectar from the flower, they happen to carry these pollen grains, the pollen grains stick to their body. And when they move from flower to flower, flower to flower, they happen to dust these pollen grains into different flowers or to the female reproductive part. And that's how naturally nature has, you know, designed the process in such a way that it happens all naturally, automatically sexual reproduction takes place. Let's begin with the structure of the pollen grain. So this is how a typical structure of pollen grain will look like, like outer layer, inner layer, and the nucleus and all that stuff. So let's begin with the outer layer first, something known as exine. You can see exine written over here. This is your outer layer. Outer layer might have spikes or some thorny like structures. This will, the spike or these storylike structures will help in attachment to the stigma. Remember the female reproductive uh, uh, of the flower? Yes, something like this. So the sigma produces sticky substance. The pollen grains will come and stick to it. So if, uh, so the female part is producing sticky substance and the male gamete, that's the pollen, they will have these spiky structures which will help in attachment. It will help in anchorage or support to the stigma. So these exine will have that. Also, another function of this exine having these spiny structures is protection from any 
uh, adverse conditions, I mean, uh, you know, intense uh, adverse environmental conditions. So to protect them from the external environmental and physical condition, the spine also uh, plays a role in that. So outer layer exine, the inner layer is intense. So outer layer is mostly dead. The living uh, inner layer is the enzyme. Inside you will see the cytoplasm. Okay, this greenish yellow thing is the cytoplasm. And you will see two nucleus, uh, one nucleus over here, uh, two nucleus basically, vegetative nucleus and the generative nucleus. What is this? We will see in the next slide. Uh, we are going to come to this, uh, the generative nucleus and the vegetative nucleus. And a small hole or a small opening you will see over here, something known as germ pore. Okay, so this is how a typical structure of a pollen grain will look like. So pollen grain cannot move on its own. Obviously, you will require agents, either a non-living agents or the living agents, like non-living may build water. Living agents may be butterflies, birds, bats. So they have to be moved from one place to the other. They cannot move on their own. They are haploid in nature, that is half the number of chromosome. They are single celled nucleus. So they are just one cell. That's it. Okay. So this is the definition of a pollen grain. Outer layer is made up of thick substance, non biodegradable means it is acting as a tough layer. Tough layer, I told you, for protection against adverse environmental conditions and for attachment to the stigma. So it is made up of a substance known as sporopollenin. So this sporopollenin gives a very tough structure, a tough protective covering to the pollen tree. So, hence it is resistant to any type of chemicals. So, it is non-biodegradable means that if you treat it with any chemical, it will not easily break or it will not easily uh, be damaged or destroyed. It is very tough protecting the inner material of the pollen grain. And what it is made up of? It is made up of sporopollenin. Then this opening which you see over here, okay. Uh, these are thin layer of exine. Here, the growth of the pollen grain will take place when the reproduction has to happen. So, here the pollen grain will start germinating during the reproduction process. So, germ pores uh, here they are made up of thin layers. So, here the exine is very thin. Otherwise, you will see they are thick. Here it is very thin. Okay, and they are there for the growth of the pollen tube. So from here, the growth uh, of the pollen grain will happen. What does this growth, what does this tube, we will see in the next slide. Uh, this will happen when the pollen is ready to fertilize the egg, that is during the germination of the pollen grain. This is in a nutshell, uh, very precise. You should be, know only the exine the germ pore and the end time regarding the structure of the pollen grain and what it is, I mean, uh, they're non motile they're haploid and they're single cell nucleus. Okay, and inner wall of the pollen grain is made up of, which is the live layer, living layer, it is made up of the cell groups. Okay, this is a complex polysaccharide, it comes under the carbohydrate category. Here, take a note of anything that you don't understand, uh, which you can ask in the right place. So, just. so how a pollen grain is formed, so we will do a recap of whatever we have covered up till here. This is how a pollen grain is with spikes and spines. Yes, so this is the flower, and it is having all the structures over here. You can see the structure. So, this is the anchor and the filament, uh, filament and the anchor. This is the female reproductive part. See, this is the stem, the peduncle, the receptor, the sepal, the petals, the stamen, and the female reproductive part. That's the carpel. Okay. So here is the filament, and here is the anchor. Now, when you cut the anchor, this is how it looks like 
from inside cross section of the anchor you have these four microsporangia and inside the microsporangia are the polar grains okay so the parent cell will always be diploid they will undergo meiosis and they will result into four haploid cells okay so four haploid cells that is four microspore will be formed this four microspore uh, each of them will further undergo mitotic division so my two cells will be formed so as a result of mitotic how many cells two haploid uh, cells will be formed okay with same genetic makeup of the parent cell okay this will further develop into vegetative and generative nucleus that we will discuss in the next slide what are they vegetative and generative nucleus so this is how a pollen grain will look like they will come in different shapes and sizes okay see some of them might have spike some of them might not have spike some of them might be uh, you know uh, having a different structure all together different shape all together different plant different plant species will have different types of pollen grains so when you cut a pollen grain when you do a cross section of a pollen grain this is how the layers will look like the outer layer and the inner layer the outer membrane and the inner membrane outer membrane exine inner membrane intact outer membrane made up of sporopollenin inner membrane made up of cellulose and you can see two nucleus over here as a result of mitotic division so this is how the pollen grains in the anther so when the anther is uh, when all the pollen grains in the anther are ready and fully matured and develop they will undergo dehiscence that is spreading of burst opening of the anther and spreading of these pollen grains into the environment which will fertilize the female reproductive part yeah moving on to how the uh, pollen grain will develop into a male gametophyte means ready to fertilize the egg so this pollen grain will develop into a structure like this remember the germ pore that we were talking about that germ pore may say germination will happen and the tube will be formed so this is how uh, uh, for you know developed male gametophyte will look like and this is the structure which will help in fertilization of the egg okay so they will go Uh, so this is the female reproductive part the stigma the style and the ovum okay so the pollen grain will sit over here will come and be uh, uh, sticky over here yes so we will so let's begin how this pollen grain which is very minute and which is very uh, small in structure will travel from this stigma to this ovary so while it is traveling from the stigma to the ovary it takes place it undergoes these different developmental stages different developmental stages which will involve certain meiotic and mitotic division uh, as well okay so the first structure is this that's the pollen grain uh, you have the intine you have the exine you have the cytoplasm and you have the nucleus of the pollen grain. okay so this everyone is familiar with so it's a normal haploid pollen grain half the number of chromosome one nucleus next step number 2 this is number second stage okay what happened as this sticks over here now it will travel step by step to this ovary so while it is traveling here next stage once the pollen has stuck over here now it will undergo division division of the pollen grain in within within the cytoplasm only it will not result into two different cells usually division when we talk about cell division we think of one cell dividing into two cells then we think usually of one cell with one nucleus dividing into two cells with two nucleus but here the division will take place but it will there will be contained in the cytoplasm only 
Okay, so you can see now there is division in the cytoplasm, uh, unequal division. You can see unequal division. So two unequal division takes place. Division is the se hoga that uh, one part is bigger and one part is smaller. Bigger part is the vegetative cell known as vegetative cell. Smaller part is known as generative cell. The nucleus also divided. It also went under mitotic division. Now mitotic division only, okay, no meiotic because the pollen grain resulted as it is as a result of meiotic division only. Now this meiotic division of which resulted into pollen grain, it will undergo mitotic division. It will result into these two cells that is vegetative cell and a generative cell. Vegetative is a bigger cell. Generative cell is a smaller cell. And two nucleus, the vegetative cell ka nucleus and the generative cell ka nucleus. Step two, stage two of development. Stage three of development. What will happen? Stage three of development. Uh, you see over here, the generative nucleus grows bigger in size. Okay. And now it is again undergoing a division, a mitotic division. Again, it will undergo mitotic division. So first mitotic division, and then it is undergoing again second mitotic division. So this is how the D, a continuation of step three. So step three continuation, division happening. This is step four resulted into two different, uh, two nucleuses. They are also known as male gametes. What are they known as? Male gametes. Vegetative nucleus is different, is uh, standing all alone. It is there, nothing has happened to vegetative cell and vegetative nucleus. Only generative cell now mixes cytoplasm. It grows into size and it undergoes again mitotic division, results into two male gametes. Okay. Now, what do you see in figure E? Three nucleus. One is for the vegetative nucleus, and the remaining two are from the generative nucleus. But now we will call them as the male gamete. So in all three nucleus. Then, as and when it is traveling here, so this germ pore will crack open. It will open, and then all the material which was there inside, which it will flow out. It will flow in this form of tube. Step five. Step five, okay. All this material will flow out in the form of tube. So, pehla to tube nucleus dikhra hai line mein and then the remaining two male gametes. So, you will see why two male gametes. This we will discover in the next video when we will uh, see about the fertilization, okay. So, don't worry, stay tuned. This we will uh, discuss. We will come to know why two male gametes are required and what will happen to this tube nucleus. What is this tube nucleus? What is the function? This we will cover in the next video. Okay, so stay curious and uh, revise up till here. So we are going to stop here in this video. That is the pollen grain now developed into a pollen tube and how this will help in fertilization and virtual reproduction. What is the function of two male gametes? Why two male gametes? And what is the steel nucleus doing? Everything we will discuss in the next video. Okay. So just an overview of what we have discussed. Number one, mature pollen grain will have two cells. That is a generative cell and a pollen tube. Okay. Then the generative cells will have uh, contained within the larger pollen tube cell. Okay, it will further absorb the cytoplasmic material and it will grow bigger in size. Then uh, once the germination takes place, the tube will be formed and the cell inner material will flow out. Okay, and then the tube will reach the ovary eventually. Yes, and as and when the tube is getting formed, so we saw how the generative cell will divide and two male gametes will be formed. Uh, you can call them as sperm cells also. And now at the end, uh, 
the tube which is there obviously the contents will not be there in the tube forever they will open up and they will go into the uh, ovary for fertilization okay so once this is done so sometimes sometimes what happens uh, this tube structure is formed in the anther only in some cases the tube structure will be formed only when the pollen grains stick to the stigma so depending upon what type of pollen grain from which plant species it is coming the development stages will be different okay in some plants the pollen grains will be circular and then they will be released in some plants the pollen grains will develop the tube that we just discussed and it, at this stage they will be released at this stage they will be burst open and then they will be released from the anther so mostly when they are at this stage uh, they are released into the environment but there are cases uh, you know there are many a times also when these when the pollen grains are still not developed into the pollen tube they are released from the anther so depending upon which plant species which pollen grains are so the developmental pattern will differ so that's all about the development of the male gametophytes so in today's class we discuss discuss about the structure of the pollen grain and the development of the male gametophyte So this will be your assignment from this video. Practice draw, drawing the PS of anther, and make a note, write a short note on the stages which are involved in the maturation of the microspore into the male gametophyte. In the next video, we will cover the structure of the ovule, the same process that we have discussed with the male part, the same thing with the female part, and then how this uh, fusion of the male gametes and fertilization, sexual reproduction takes place. That we will.